Hey guys, it's Noelle. Way back when in my Plan With Me series, I did a video about all the best pens you can use to bullet journal. And as many of you pointed out in the comments, I didn't feature one major type of pen in the video, and that is fountain pens. Some of you are probably wondering what the heck is a fountain pen? Well, unlike a gel pen or a ballpoint pen or felt tip pens, a fountain pen has a metal pointed nib that looks like this. Basically, when you use this, you'll feel like a totally epic 18th century romance writer like Jane Austen because it's like really, really cool. But as cool as they are, fountain pens can be a bit tricky to get used to and master. So I thought it would be a great idea to give you a beginner's guide to using a fountain pen in this video. But before I do, definitely subscribe to Seventeen's YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our future organizational tips and tricks. All right, here we go. For this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use a fountain pen using the Pilot Plumix line of fountain pens. Fountain pens are different from the pens that you usually use because they don't come with ink in them. You have to buy either a cartridge or a bottle of ink in order to fill the pen. The idea of having to constantly refill your pen can be intimidating, but what's great about fountain pens is that since you're refilling the ink, your pen lasts a lot longer than regular disposable pens. So first, I'm gonna show you two ways to install ink into a fountain pen. The first way to install ink into a fountain pen is using cartridges. These cartridges are basically the tube of ink you see in your regular pens all the time. You've just never had to install the ink before. Installing an ink cartridge into a fountain pen is super simple. First, make sure that you have the right brand of cartridge to go with your brand of fountain pen. Mine is a Pilot Plumix fountain pen, so I have Pilot ink cartridges. First things first, to install your ink, screw off the top part of your Pilot pen. Now, take your ink cartridge and push the open rounded end of it into your pen firmly, and you'll feel kind of a little pop. That's the bottom of the pen popping the ink cartridge open so that the ink can flow down into the metal nib. Now, squeeze your ink cartridge a few times to push the ink into the pen. Then, before screwing on the top of your pen, do a few strokes on a piece of paper to see if the ink is flowing smoothly through the metal nib. Once you confirm that your ink is flowing, all you have to do is screw the top of the pen back onto the bottom, and you've got your first fountain pen working. So that's the first super simple way to install an ink cartridge into a fountain pen. But the ink cartridge method can be a little limiting because the truth is, a lot of the cooler ink colors don't come in cartridges. So that's why you might wanna try the second method of installing ink into a fountain pen. And that's a bottle of ink in a converter. I have another Pilot fountain pen that I'm gonna to use to show you how to install ink using a converter. A converter is basically a reusable ink cartridge. So this kind of makes fountain pens even more reusable in the sense that you won't be throwing away disposable ink cartridges. You'll literally just use this over and over. Basically all it is is a twisty reusable cartridge that creates a vacuum that sucks ink into your pen. All you do to use it is you take the converter and stick it into your fountain pen much in the same way as you stuck the ink cartridge in. Only once it's firmly placed into your pen, all you have to do is dip the nib of your fountain pen into a bottle of ink and then turn the knob on top of the converter until the cartridge fills with ink. Then make sure that it writes on your paper and then once you've confirmed that the ink is running smoothly, you just screw back on the top of the pen and then you've installed ink with a converter. The last thing you should probably know before we jump into writing with our fountain pen is that much like your favorite felt tip pens or ballpoint pens, fountain pens come in several different sizes. What that means is that the metal nib at the bottom of the pen can be very small or very large. And depending on how big it is, the broader the strokes of your pen are going to be. I have three different size fountain pens, a fine tip, a medium tip, and a bold tip. And you'll see that each one has a very different stroke. I think we're ready to jump into writing with our fountain pen. Are you excited or what? The first thing that you should take note of with a fountain pen 
is how you should hold it. Every fountain pen is different. Some fountain pens, you have to be very careful about how you hold your pen, whether that's keeping it straight to write on the paper or keeping it slanted at all times. So what you should do is take your fountain pen and write with it at different angles to test how sensitive the nib is and whether you'll need to be very careful about how you write with it. So after testing out my Pilot Plumix pen in different positions, I found that it's not super sensitive. You can use it at any angle and feel pretty confident that your ink is gonna flow very smoothly, but depending on your pen, you might have to use it differently. So just take note of that. Now that you've taken note of how you should write with your fountain pen, basically all you have to do is start writing and get used to it. There are no real rules to using a fountain pen, and even though it looks intimidating, it is basically just like writing with a regular pen. So if writing with a fountain pen is just like writing with a ballpoint pen or a felt tip pen, why use a fountain pen? Well, writing with a fountain pen gives your writing a brand new unique look. I wrote up my alphabet with a felt tip pen and then wrote it out again with a bold nib fountain pen underneath. As you can see, since a felt tip pen has a rounded end, all the letters came out looking pretty basic. But when I used a fountain pen with a bold metal nib, the downward strokes are thick and sideways strokes are thin, giving the letters a cooler, unique style without changing your writing style at all. So what about decorative hand lettering with fountain pens? Changing the nib of your fountain pen also makes hand lettering look super different. So I just wrote out 17 in loopy cursive with my fine, medium, and bold nibs to show you how different they look just by using different nibs. But if you're looking to do really intricate, cool hand lettering and calligraphy, you might wanna to stick to using a bolder nib because using a bold nib allows you to create different size strokes depending on the way that you hold the pen. By using my bold nib fountain pen, I was able to create thick downstrokes and thin upstrokes by adjusting the angle of my pen without having to use the fake calligraphy method that I use with my felt tip pens or my ballpoint pens. So in that way, using a fountain pen is a lot more like using a brush tip pen so that adjusting the angle can give you thicker lines and thinner lines. I found that at least with the Pilot Plumix fountain pen, the different size strokes is all about the angle not pressure like with a brush pen. You can get super intricate with your fountain pen just like any other pen. After I was done writing out love, I decided to take my pink fountain pen and create a cute little heart. And then I did a pink swirly line underneath. I used my fine nib fountain pen to create a black outline with slanted lines in it to tie it all together. Well, that's it, your guide to getting started with a fountain pen. I hope this video helps you get the courage to go out and buy yourself a fountain pen and start using it in your bullet journal. Definitely subscribe to Seventeen's YouTube channel below so that you don't miss out on any of our future bullet journaling videos just like this one. Bye.